This is Norway. This rather small country with its renowned natural scenery is populated by a fascinating but contradictory people. They're pretty modest and like to mind their own business, but at the same time there's nothing they can't do based simply on the fact that they are Norwegians. They were the first to reach the South Pole and the American continent. They can beat Brazil 4-0 in soccer, rule the Winter Olympics and get 99% of their power from hydroelectric dams. So if you were to tell them that you can't run a car on water, they'd probably say, well, that depends how you look at it. It can do 110 miles on one charge. It's highway approved, has a top speed of 65 miles an hour. Best of all, this is not even a prototype. It's here. The Think City is an all-electric suburb to city car that has it where it counts. The Scandinavian design is minimal but comfortable. It packs a lot of space for the city dweller. It's easy to manoeuvre and above all, it's fun. We took the city for an extensive three-day test drive and it surprised us a lot. But first things first. Going to turn it on. Lights blinking all around here. And I think it is on. Handbrake is off and... Yes, rolling. Fast, yeah! Oh, it works like a charm. We Whoa. can make quick turns without problems. It's excellent. Pretty aggressive, Even eh? Even though it have, doesn't have a servo, it has a very small radius of the swing, so you don't have to push it far to get around corners. It's just like, whoop, and we're around. It's not called swing, but it's called uh, it's not called a turning. Swing. Turning. Yes. Turning this car is quite easy. It's not like an automatic because it doesn't have any gears, but you put it in D and push the acceleration pedal and it goes like hell. So, acceleration is very smooth and all the way good. Playing a small vehicle, you would expect the space to be small and crummy, but as you can see, me being 185, I still have a lot of room for my head. I can jump around. In the back, you have excellent plates. The trunk is very big. We have actually been able to carry a whole film set during this filming. Contracts kiss my industry. I'll sing the system to its knees. Is it possible to have sex in this car? It would be very capable of having sex in this car, if you would like to do so. But being that all the walls are full of windows, giving nice view and also creating a very open atmosphere, you will be spotted. But the space is here, so do whatever you want to do. Considering safety in the car that's this small, you will think, oh, if I crash, I will die. But consider this you can actually drive quite fast into something quite big and hard and come out walking. Shooting straight, straight from the hip. Okay, so the car is named the City. So you'd expect it to perform excellently under city driving conditions. But what if you had to satisfy the Norwegian's lust for freezing temperatures combined with high altitudes? On the doorsteps of Oslo and around the 300 meters up lies Trivan, a ski resort that is heavily visited by the people of Oslo during the winter months. If we could make it up there and make it fast, we could be there just in time for sunset. I remember We quickly realised how little hassle it was to get up the hill. Our mighty challenge was reduced to a tourist sightseeing trip. The driver became so sure of himself, he even tried overtaking the film car. Moments later, we made it to the top. And although the task in the end was extremely easy, we felt like conquerors of old. We got ourselves a nice cup of hot chocolate and reflected on the day's events. This would have been the perfect spot to contemplate how to get rid of the city smog below us, except for the fact that we could not see it because of the fog. So with that in mind, we called it a day and went to bed. 
curious on what the next day would bring. The next morning it was off to the drag racing track, Raceway Oslo. It's over a kilometre long and located right next to Oslo Airport. And we could think of no other place to push the think to its limits. But since it's the weekend and the track's not serviced, it's covered with a lethal mixture of snow and ice. When they saw the track, our camera crew went on immediate strike in fear of their own lives. But the madness of our driver knows no limits and he was determined to take it for a spin nonetheless. Of course, we could not make any accurate judgments on the car in these conditions. But that is not to say that it wasn't an exhilarating experience for both the safely distant crew and the driver of the car. It was time to deliver our car back and for us to give our experience some thought. We felt the car had served us well during these days and during the 300 kilometers we had driven. We actually saved as much CO2 as 36 trees can consume in an entire year. And even if the power were to come from coal, it would still be a lot better than if we had driven a car with a normal combustion engine. In terms of energy efficiency, it's easy to see that the 100% electric alternative is far more superior in overcoming our energy challenges. So before you hydrogen buffs get all nasty on us, we'd like to point out that hydrogen needs to be produced from something. It is absolutely delusional to view it as an intelligent solution when you compare the well-to-wheel efficiency, which can be as low as 23% for the hydrogen, compared to the battery electric, 84%. Additionally, the infrastructure of the electric vehicle is already here. It would take huge resources to establish an infrastructure for hydrogen. So put a sock in it, Hammond. And for the rest of you, we would encourage you to join us at electricaid.org where we will keep a watchful look on the future of electric car development. <laughs>